Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. So Bernard and I took a much needed social media break, but we're back with a new project, which is our mudroom redo. Now, I know I shared this first makeover recently, but behind the scenes, we were actually working on this project. And now I can share all the details in one video, including our crazy paint drama you'll have to see to believe. So the first addition to our small mudroom was creating a board and batten accent wall. I wanted a smoother texture, so Bernard cut and installed this hardboard tempered panel. To the base, he glued a piece of 1x2 primed MDF board. Next, he installed 8 vertical 1x3 boards, each spaced about 9.5 inches apart. The top horizontal piece is also 1x2. In the description box, you'll find a link to the website we use to help determine the spacing and the number of vertical slats necessary to create this board and batten layout. Next, Bernard filled and sanded all the holes, and this was as far as we got with the board and batten wall before we decided to pivot and work on other parts of the space. Moving on to the DIY shoe bench where we decided to use pre-finished plywood. Bernard routed grooves in the plywood and assembled the pieces using wood glue and pin nails. A lot of clamping was involved in the process just until the glue set. Next was demoing the previous mudroom additions, which was a bit sad, but necessary to make the space more functional for our family. I decided to keep the shiplap, but Bernard did remove one piece to accommodate the future cabinets. Since I wanted the new shoe bench to fit flush against the wall, he also removed a portion of the baseboard. We then got to work on building the taller of the two cabinets, again using pre-finished plywood and routing grooves in the plywood pieces.
We assembled the cabinet using a combination of wood glue and screws, then clamped it up and left it to dry overnight. The smaller cabinet was constructed similarly to the larger one and was much easier to assemble after having to maneuver the larger one. With both cabinet boxes built, we went back to working on the shoe bench. I decided to include two pull-out drawers in the design for more storing potential. After having built the shoe bench and two cabinets, the drawers didn't give us any problems. And because no one likes pinched fingers, Bernard went with soft closing drawer slides. He also edge banded to give the plywood a more professional finish. And now we're back to the board and batten accent wall. Bernard primed it and right before he began painting, I realized we had just enough pole wrap to include some in the board and batten design. We added some quarter inch plywood backing and then glued the pole wrap on top. This last minute addition definitely amplified the texture of the board and batten wall and I'm so glad it worked out as well as it did. But now this is where things took a turn with the pink colors. Initially I wanted our mudroom space to feature various shades of green but that didn't go as planned. The pink color you're seeing here is called svelte sage. When wet it's a beautiful gray green shade but once dried it just didn't look right. The other green is called retreat. With our lighting this color had a very strong blue undertone and it just was a no for me. While I marinated on the paint colors, Bernard went ahead and installed the rest of the pole wrap to the side of the taller cabinet and to the back wall in the space. <music> 
For the bench top, we used a piece of birch butcher block. I started out by applying pre-stained wood conditioner which creates a more even appearance when I do apply the stain. I'm using Barathane Early American which I use quite often for staining projects. It is oil based so I let it dry for 24 hours before applying 4 coats of Veritane water based poly in a matte finish. Not only do I have this rich brown color but also the confidence that the bench top will hold up well to everyday use. Bernard then secured both cabinets to the wall and you may have noticed a pole wrap included underneath the smaller cabinet as well. Going back to the board and batten accent wall where we hoped painting the pole wrap and door would somehow make a more positive difference, but it honestly just made it look that much worse. I wanted to share our highs and lows with you guys so that you don't have this misconceived notion that our projects always work out perfectly every time because they don't. But what you'll also see is how we head back to the drawing board and come back with a much better design plan like this beautiful dark brown color Bernard is using which is called Seal Skin by HGTV Home by Sharon Williams. I don't regret my decision to paint the pole wrap on the board and batten wall, but I do believe it took the right color to bring out this added dimension and texture. This paint color is agreeable gray, and if you haven't seen our understairs project, this is the same color on the exterior of our pullout drawers. It appears lighter on camera, but it's much warmer in person. With the paint colors finally squared away, we could then refocus on the cabinet build. Bernard used pocket holes and screws to assemble the face frames.
This was Bernard's first time building cabinet doors and I certainly didn't cut him any slack by asking him to build inset doors instead of the typical overlay ones. We used quarter inch plywood in the center of the cabinet doors and three quarter inch pine on the sides. Both cabinet doors were built exactly a quarter inch shorter and wider than the face frame opening. That way after the doors are installed there would be an 8 inch gap on all sides. We also used a concealed hinge jig to create the holes for the cabinet hinges. Since I wanted inset doors, we went with soft closing, 110 degree hinges. There was some back and forth on the hinge adjustments until Bernard was able to get the doors closed completely and accurately. Finishing details to this project included installing the shoe bench drawer fronts, the cabinet hardware, the coat hooks, and art. This new and improved mudroom is better than anything I could have hoped for. I'm loving the juxtaposition of the two colors and have been referring to this corner as our light and moody mudroom. I couldn't be any happier with this project and I think we had to go through the paint struggles to get to this best part. I'm excited to hear what's your favorite part of this project. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.